Hey everybody, welcome to Simple Hobby Home Setting. Today we are going to make chicken with Italian salsa. But first of all, we need to marinate the chicken. And I've done this before where I haven't marinated it or I've marinated it just for like an hour or two. But really, this chicken is the best when it gets 12 to 24 hours of marinade sit time where you put the marinade together and let it sit in the fridge for 12 to 24 hours. It really, really, really does affect the taste of the chicken. And so I highly recommend it. This is a really wonderful recipe to use a lot of the herbs that you have growing like crazy in the garden right now. And if you don't have herbs growing or in pots or anything like that around, um, I really recommend that you get the fresh herbs. In fact, this recipe really can't be done very well with dried herbs. It's just not great. Um, in the winter, if you need to, in a pinch, it can be done with dried herbs, but the salsa can't. Um, but the marinade, I guess, could. But uh, just phenomenal with fresh herbs. And if you don't grow your own herbs, you can grab uh, them in, they've got like them um, in the clamshell packs in the produce part of almost every grocery store or get with a friend that has herbs that grows herbs and just kind of, you don't need a ton, so just kind of snip off a few edges of theirs. Um, but get the fresh herbs for this recipe, please, please, please. So we're gonna make that marinade first and what we're gonna do, we got lots of herbs here, I'm so excited. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna give you a couple little tricks for this marinade. Grab a gallon Ziploc bag, take it and just turn over the top so that you have the top overturned. This is gonna help prevent a ton of mess um, and that way you can turn it back up and seal it up without having the seal part all gunked up with whatever we're putting in here. So, we are going to get our little bag there. And the first thing we are going to throw in is salt, pepper, kind of our dry ingredients we're going to put in here. So we need a quarter teaspoon of salt. And you know I've got my big amber jars. And I would say like if you just, uh, if you just got it right there handy, like two pinches of salt. A quarter teaspoon of salt. Doesn't take much salt at all in this recipe, which is nice. And then we need a half a teaspoon of ground pepper. So let's grab that. And I just so happen to have the half teaspoon right here. And this is all going in our bag, in our marinade bag. All right, so the next thing we need is some garlic powder. We're going for a half a teaspoon of garlic powder. And in this marinade, it's better to use the garlic powder rather than fresh garlic. So we're gonna do a half a teaspoon of garlic powder. That's probably the only thing in this recipe that you're using um, the powder instead of the or the powder instead of the uh, fresh herb. So the next thing we're going to do is we need our. I'm just I've got my list over here just to make sure I get everything the right amounts. Thyme. We need a half a teaspoon of thyme. You can see I just went and snipped a few little uh, branches of thyme off of our herbs up in the garden, and it's really really easy. You take the top of the thyme and you hold it with your fingers. And then you just take your thumb and your forefinger and just slide it down the stem and all those little leaves come off because we're just going to use the leaves for this recipe of thyme. We don't want the stalks at all. If you get the very top of the stalk, that's fine. It's tender. But the rest of the thyme stalk is actually quite tough. And so the very top is okay, but we want the rest of it just the leaves. So you can pick off the very top of some of these, but the rest of it, we just want the leaves. All right, so we're going to get leaves off of a bunch of this thyme. And we only need a half of a teaspoon, so we don't need a ton of thyme. But we're just going to take, we're going to take the very tops off there. And then we're just going to take and slide our fingers down to get the rest of those leaves off. Oh, I love the smell of thyme. We use a lot of thyme in um, cooking. We use a lot of thyme in, what recipe am I thinking of? The Crock-Pot Chicken recipe has a good bit of thyme in it, which is so good. Okay, so this looks like it's probably going to be, we're just getting these tough stems out. This looks like it's probably going to be a nice half a teaspoon. Let's time, you just kind of take and rock your knife back and forth. Like that, super easy. Just chop it up until it gets nice and small. Just keep piling it up and keep chopping. All right, and that looks about, that much looks at about half a teaspoon. All right, next we need a teaspoon of fresh parsley, Italian parsley, and a teaspoon of fresh rosemary. So that's probably gonna be about a teaspoon right there. One good stalk. Same 
same kind of thing. This doesn't have to be perfect because once again, it is going in a marinade. And did you know that parsley freshens dog's breath? So if you happen to drop a little bit of parsley on the floor, let your dog grab it. If you have a little bit of extra parsley left after you get done chopping, sprinkle some on their food. It is so good for their breath. And it's okay if you put a little bit or less or a little bit more, just not so much less, but a little bit more if you want, but just so you have equal amounts of parsley and rosemary. So that's about when it would be all smushed down. That's about a teaspoon right there. That's about a teaspoon. Maybe a little more, I like parsley. I like the taste of parsley. All right, rosemary, same kind of thing. If you get it from your garden, make sure you give it a good little wash first. Now rosemary is just like the thyme. We're gonna grab the top and just slide our fingers down and look how easily those uh, leaves come off of the rosemary. And then you can just get the top off. Uh, we're gonna have to make rosemary cookies sometime. That is the best tasting recipe ever. It's a very buttery cookie, but it's so good. If you have any brown leaves of the rosemary, just pick those off. And we're just gonna chop, 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 chop. Rosemary is probably my favorite fragrant herb. Sometimes I cut rosemary and just leave it around the house. It smells so good. I hear some doggies barking. All right, we're looking for a teaspoon of rosemary. that probably just a little bit more I love rosemary love it there we go all right so we got a rosemary we got our thyme in there next we're gonna grab some Dijon mustard Dijon mustard and we need one tablespoon of Dijon mustard and once again this is going in the marinade for this chicken one tablespoon of Dijon mustard a a healthy tablespoon. Next, we're gonna grab some balsamic vinegar and we need a table, two tablespoons, I'm sorry, two tablespoons of balsamic vinegar. There's one. There's two. Two tablespoons of balsamic vinegar one tablespoon of olive oil. All right, Let's see if I can do it one-handed. I sure can. One tablespoon of olive oil. There we go, nicely done. All right, let me check and make sure we got everything. I think we're missing one thing, lemon juice. We're missing lemon juice. Let me get that here in just a second. Um, and the oregano, we're missing the oregano. We'll have to get that here in a second too. So we need a tablespoon of oregano and two tablespoons of lemon juice. Now one good sized lemon is gonna give you about two tablespoons of lemon juice. So we're just gonna slice this in half, use our handy dandy lemon juicer. One good sized lemon, like I said, will give you uh, two tablespoons of lemon juice. So that's one tablespoon. Directly, just putting it directly in the bag. No reason to dirty up an extra bowl or anything. Two tablespoons there. Nice. And here I have um, oregano and rosemary right here. All right, and now we need a tablespoon of, right, a tablespoon of oregano, yep. A tablespoon of oregano. Now, there's a couple different kinds of oregano. There's spicy oregano, there's Italian oregano, there's Greek oregano. If you can find Italian oregano, that's what I want you to use in this recipe. If you can't find it and you have to use Greek or spicy or something like that, that's fine. Um, get any oregano you can. But if you can, grab Italian oregano. It's the best for this recipe. So just like everything else, we are gonna take the top and we're gonna pluck off the top and then we're gonna take and hold the stem and just get the rest of those leaves off. And once again, this is gonna be a little bit more um, oregano where the other ones were one teaspoon, this is gonna be a tablespoon of oregano. So three times as much of the oregano. So it's an oregano heavy recipe, which is so good, so good. All right, so let's get this oregano. I think this is gonna be plenty right here. I'm gonna move this bag just for a second so I've got more cutting board room. We 
We can always add more to the little pile as we're chopping if we need to. But I think this is gonna be a good amount. We're gonna add a little bit more because we added a little bit more of the rosemary and the parsley just because I had it there and I love it. So we're gonna add a little bit more of the oregano because I have it here and I love it. That's the nice thing about cooking, especially marinades too. I mean, it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. If you like a certain flavor over another, um, you are welcome to add a little bit more of whatever that flavor is. And if you want the marinade just stronger, just add a little bit more of everything in proportion of what it's supposed to be. Okay, this is a beautiful full tablespoon of Italian oregano. Once again, we just take and we rock our knife back and forth on the cutting board over it. And it is good. Oh, that looks delicious. Absolutely amazing. Okay, so we have everything in there that we need, right? We have our salt. One quarter teaspoon of salt. One half teaspoon of pepper. One half teaspoon of thyme, freshly chopped. One half teaspoon of garlic powder. One teaspoon of parsley, freshly chopped. One teaspoon of rosemary, freshly chopped. One tablespoon of Dijon. One tablespoon of oregano, freshly chopped. Uh, two tablespoons of balsamic and two tablespoons of lemon juice. We have everything in here that we need. So we're just gonna give this a good little shake up with our hand, kind of a mash up. And then we're gonna add our chicken. Four chicken breasts is what this recipe calls for. If you need to double it, go for it, double it. If you need to cut it in half, go for it, cut it in half, totally up to you. And these are big chicken breasts. So what we're going to do is we're gonna put two of them in there and then we're going to thin them out just a bit. So I'm gonna get some of the air out of here. I'm gonna move my cutting board for a second. Okay, so uh, chicken breasts, they seem to come very thick nowadays. They've got uh, chicken breasts that are very, very thick. And so we wanna thin those out so they cook a little bit more even and they cook a little bit quicker. We're gonna grill these chicken breasts. So I like to use, you can use a meat mallet, but I always, I can never find mine. And so I use a, a rolling pin. It's a really handy, most everybody has them. Um, you can also use, what else can you use? Um, anything that's hard and can, uh, I guess you can use like the side of a hammer even. Just watch that you don't rip holes in the bag. Put a towel down first maybe to use that hammer. But I just take, and I hit uh, the fat part of the chicken breast with the rolling pin. It's gonna be loud just like that. Just to kind of even out the fat part of that breast. And then we're gonna do the other two here in a minute. But I put two in the bag at a time. Okay. Try not to get it too close to the seal. Sometimes it'll break that seal open. I'm just really uh, hitting the top part of the chicken breast. I'm not even messing with that bottom part because I don't want to make that any thinner. There we go. That also works well to kind of get some of these flavors into the chicken. So now I'm going to put my other two chicken breasts in there and do the same thing with them. There we go. Now we're just going to kind of mix this up a bit. Make sure all four chicken breasts are in that marinade. And then we're going to let this marinade sit. Uh, for the next, I would say about 16, 24 hours in the fridge. 12 hours is a great plenty, but I just happen to have a little bit of extra time. So we're gonna let that sit in the fridge. If you wanna flip it every once in a while, you're welcome to a couple times, but you really don't have to. It really marinates beautifully in this Ziploc bag. Uh, and then we will be back to grill this up and show you how to make the salsa that goes on top and even maybe some fresh veggies grilled next to it. So yummy, yummy, yummy. If you want to get your veggies ready um, and marinating as well, just grab some zucchini, some yellow squash, some tomatoes, some bell peppers and cut them up uh, and throw them in with some Italian salad dressing in a Ziploc bag like this if you want to start marinating those now. Uh, but you totally don't have to. It's up to you. Hey everybody, welcome back to the next day where we have our chicken that has been marinating overnight and most of the day. I made a double batch, as you can see, and it looks delicious. I also went ahead and I cut up a bunch of grilled vegetables. There's zucchini, there's yellow squash, there's yellow, orange, and red, and green peppers in here. I'm gonna throw some mushrooms in there at the last minute. I didn't want them to soak up too much of the Italian salad dressing that I have in there. And we are going to make the salsa for the chicken today. Now this is a balsamic vinegar based salsa, but it has a lot of the same things in it that is typical to your Mexican salsa. We're gonna put 
tomatoes in there. We're going to put uh, salt in there. We're going to put pepper. We're going to put um, garlic. I was like, what is this, garlic? But we're also going to put balsamic vinegar, orange juice concentrate, stick with me, and basil. Now I have two kinds of basil here because I went up to the garden and I noticed that my main dolce sweet Italian basil is flowering and flowering like crazy. And a lot of times that means it's gone bitter, it's bolted. Um, but I went ahead and I picked it anyways because I figured, you know what, if anything is going to make my kitchen smell amazing, I put it in a glass jar of water. But we're going to give it a taste here and just see uh, if it has bolted. And it has not. It's not bitter. I still got that incredibly great Italian taste. So I don't have to use this columnar basil. Now I have Greek columnar basil as well, which is a wonderful basil. And I'm going to go ahead and, and dry this and just store it because I already picked it. But that's a wonderful basil to have because no matter how hot it gets, no matter what, it will not flower and it will not bolt. Um, and so it is an incredible basil to have. It's more of a floral basil. It's a Greek-based basil. And so um, not the best choice for this recipe, but it's hard to find in the store. Most people, you can only grow it. But the basil you find in the store is mostly your uh, Italian dolce sweet basil, um, which is what we have here. And it's what we're going to go ahead and use. So I went ahead and I picked some leaves earlier, and I washed them and dried them. And so we've got them all ready here, which is really great. So we are going to add about two and a quarter cups of tomato chopped up uh, and we are going to add a tablespoon of orange juice concentrate thawed out. We're going to add a half a teaspoon of salt, a half a teaspoon of balsamic vinegar, um, about one clove of garlic. They are, the recipe calls for a half a teaspoon of minced garlic. So that's about one small clove. Um, and then what else? Oh, and then some pepper, like a quarter teaspoon of pepper, a couple good grinds of fresh pepper. And that's it. That's it for the, I was looking around, I was like, is there anything else? No, that's it for the salsa that goes on top of the chicken. And the salsa you can make ahead and put it in the refrigerator, and that is phenomenal just to go on top of that chicken. So this is just the easiest recipe ever because that chicken has been marinating since last night. All we're going to do is throw that on a nice grill, and then we're going to have the salsa to go on top. I'm going to make some garlic bread. I'm going to have these vegetables that I'm going to throw on the grill after the chicken is done. And it is a full meal that is so good and so easy. So here we go. Let's go ahead and get these veggies chopped up for the salsa. Now with this uh, basil, the easiest way to cut this, we're gonna cut it in what's called a chiffonade, is take the leaves and kind of pile them on each other with the biggest leaves being on the outside. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold it in, like kind of wrap it in. And you don't have to get all of them in one cut. We can do a couple different cuts. So let's show you on this. We need a half a cup of chopped basil. That's what we're looking for. Chopped cut basil. So we're just gonna take, and we're just gonna, it's called chiffonade. You're just doing little cuts, and look at how it goes like that. And then we can come back, and we can chop it if we need to. And we do. So we're just gonna come back and just do a rough chop this way. And we're looking at about a half a cup is what we want. So let's get that in there. And then let's do the same thing with the rest of this basil. See how my knife just kind of rocks back and forth and never really leaves the cutting board. The tip of it doesn't. And then just a rough chop this way. Now basil does bruise easily, so you don't want to chop this a ton. There we go. That is about a half a cup right there. That's beautiful. I'm gonna throw that in. All right. So I have like super small garlic cloves for some reason. So I'm gonna do like a clove and a half of one. And we're just gonna stick this right in here. Oh, that's perfect. Half a teaspoon of minced garlic right there. We'll get that down in there here in a second. All right, we're looking at a full tablespoon of this orange juice concentrate. And it's good if it's thawed. You can see mine's not quite thawed yet. That's okay though. And then you can just go ahead and make some orange juice after you're done. All right, now with these tomatoes, wash them all first. The garden is giving a really nice bounty. And to chop tomatoes, I find the easiest way is to cut them in half this way. Grab your chicken bowl and then just get the insides out into your chicken bowl. 
And that's just the bowl of stuff we give to the chickens and the pigs. Because you don't want a real soupy salsa for this recipe. All right, and then we're just going to chop these tomatoes up just like we do for regular Mexican salsa on Taco Tuesdays. Have you seen our Taco Tuesday video? If you haven't, jump over and find that because it's a fun video. Everyone should be doing Taco Tuesday, really. They should. It's the easiest meal every Tuesday night, and it's, like, super healthy. So we're taking and just roughly chopping, just like a salsa chop. About two and a quarter cups of chopped tomatoes. There we go. We've got our two and a quarter cups of tomatoes. So we're going to go ahead and add that to what we already have got there. All right, now we need a half a teaspoon of balsamic vinegar. If you want to measure it, go ahead and measure it. I'm not a huge fan of measuring things, so we're going to call that a splash. It's just a splash of balsamic vinegar. All right, a little bit. I love it. There we go. A little bit of splash of balsamic vinegar. All right, and then a half a teaspoon of salt. That's like two pinches, I would say. We're going to throw that in there. And then I think, let's see, I think, oh, a little bit of pepper. I would say like a couple, quarter teaspoon of pepper, so a couple of good grinds of pepper. All right, and then we're going to stir this all up. That orange juice has melted really nicely. It looks absolutely delicious, and I wish, I so wish that you could smell this because it smells divine. And this salsa keeps in the fridge for a good three or four days, uh, which is really, really nice. Um, if you want to make a big batch of the chicken and a big batch of the salsa to eat on it for a couple days. And one of my favorite things about this recipe is it's kid friendly because if your kids aren't a big fan of this salsa, the chicken with the marinade is amazing grilled just on its own. It has intense flavor. It's so incredibly good. And that could be a meal in and of itself for your kids. They just don't have to add the salsa on top. So your kids can have the chicken breast and you have the chicken breast and then you just add your salsa on top and it's just, it makes it like a, a gourmet meal. Um, whereas your kids are eating the same thing without any kind of extra effort from you, they're just not adding the salsa. But have your kids try the salsa because it's really, really good. Alright guys, are you ready for the best invention known to man? It's the grill basket. These are so handy and these nice deep grill baskets are really nice for our veggies. We have these in a simple Italian marinade. Uh, they were sitting in this marinade since this morning and it's just an Italian dressing marinade. marinade. You can just get the bottle dressing or do the Italian dressing yourself, whatever you'd like to do. And then we're going to put this on the grill after we pull the chicken off. We're going to mix it up just a little bit, about five minutes through and about 10 minutes on a warm grill. And that's after the chicken's already cooked. Uh, we'll have these veggies absolutely perfect, absolutely perfect with that smoke inflation, 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 in flavoring, like infusion, that's the word I'm looking for. The smoke uh, infusion from the grill is going to make these so, so good. And it's the perfect side dish. We're going to add a few um, cherry tomatoes and a few uh, mushrooms as well towards the end. We don't want those to get exploded or super mushy. So we'll add those about five minutes in. I'm so excited. All right, and you can't have any good Italian meal without some bread. So we're going to slice up some French bread here. And we're going to add our homemade garlic butter. And then we're just going to lightly toast this. You could also throw this on the grill around the uh, basket of veggies as well to get a nice grilled French bread, which actually we might even do that. I'm not sure. Um, but the uh, homemade garlic butter that we have here is just parsley, uh, garlic, a good Kerry's Gold uh, butter, a little bit of salt, and that's it. Parsley, did I say parsley? Parsley, yeah, and it is absolutely phenomenal. This is a go-to for us always, always for garlic bread. And one thing I really do love about grilling in the summer is you don't have to use the oven uh, that heats up your house. And so you can keep your house nice and cool without that oven heating up the house. All right, guys, it is done. Grilled chicken with Italian salsa with a side of uh, grilled veggies, summer veggies, with some yummy homemade garlic bread. And let's just take a bite and see how this is with the salsa. I'm going to try it here. 
That's amazing. Best chicken ever. Welcome to Simple Hobby Homesteading and today we are going to make something called chicken with Italian salsa. And if you hear pitter patter, it's because I have a golden retriever in here, I have a German Shepherd in here, and as soon as I start talking, they feel like they need to walk around. So I'm going to put them out. And now you want Italian parsley, not the curly parsley. You want Italian, it's also known as flat leaf parsley. Make sure you get that kind of parsley if you're getting it from the store. Italian flat leaf parsley. One teaspoon. 